Hello and welcome to MicroCap Tutorials. My name is Paul and we're going to be going over reverse polarity protection using the MOSFET method. Uh, in the past, uh, for smaller and simpler applications, a diode is sufficient when you're just communicating uh, signal information, low current information, but uh, if you want to do reverse polarity protection in an automotive field, the power side of things needs to be protected from um, reverse polarity conditions or reverse battery, how, whatever the verbiage is used for that application. It needs to be protected. So uh, before we can start talking about MOSFETs, and I'm not going to go all into the physics of MOSFETs and how they work, and uh, we're just going to kind of keep a basic understanding, but we're going to go into special purpose. This is a category of devices that you can use, and we're going to choose a V switch. So that's going to be a switch that is that is voltage actuated. So we're going to put this switch here. and. We're going to decide, uh, it doesn't really matter if you do PMOS or NMOS in this case, so we're just going to say OK and just take the, the values. And so we'll go back into there, but we're going to talk about why we, we're going to do this. So the switch is essentially allowing the voltage from this side to that side, or current to pass from this side to this side. And we want it to be conditioned on the fact that all positive values um, are allowed and all negative values are allowed. So this is one of our system constraints. Our load is we're going to say it's sensitive to um, polarization. It's a resistor, so um, in this case, you know, it, it might not be, but uh, we're going to say the, the load is 100 ohms and that it is sensitive to polarization or reverse polarization, and so we're going to protect it, saying that all, uh, all V out values must be greater than zero. Okay, so we have this switch, and now we need to determine the logic for which it's going to, it's going to be on or off. So we're going to go back into the parameters, and when the way that switches work, we, we like to think of them as they have infinite impedance or they have zero impedance, but this may not be realizable in a, in a domain where we're going to be calculating um, because 1 over infinity is difficult to calculate and 1 over zero is difficult to calculate sometimes. So typically we choose significantly high values, and um, usually in the mega ohms range is, is what the resistance will be for any MOSFET or for any sort of bridge um, when it's considered off. So a lot of times MOSFETs will be 8 mega ohms uh, or around that range. And when it's on, there's going to be some resistance associated with it. So it's not perfectly 0 ohms. It's going to be, I don't know, 0 0.1 or 0 0.3. This was the, um, this is what was the, the default setting. Now, uh, that covers how the load is going to be switched on or off on the network, and then now the conditions of the switch. So uh, in order for this to occur, for, for this to be off, um, then this is going to be at zero volts, and for this to be on, it's going to be at one volt. So we're just going to do a quick little simulation here. We're going to set this to five volts, something that might come out of a microcontroller, and then we're going to set this to ground. And then we'll wire this portion up. Okay, so what we should expect is that I am instructing this relay, you know, this is essentially like a, a idealized relay, to, to accept all values of whatever is coming here, both negative and positive, because this is my instruction to say that it's on all the time. So I'm going to go into analysis and transient and run. All right, cool. So there's my VN value. It goes all the way up to 10 volts, minus 10 volts, things we've seen before. And then you have the output, which also experiences that. Now, since this is polarized, uh, or we're saying that it is, is going to be sensitive to polarization, maybe it might be like a capacitor or something like that, um, we're going to now accept only the positive values. So we're going to do that. What, what that does is it takes all of the positive values and then it applies it across the terminals here um, and instructs this relay to turn on. And when this is reverse polarized, that now the controls say you can't be on. So we're going to go to analysis and transient and see what that might look like. And that's exactly what we obtain. We see it copies all of the voltage values from, uh, from the input, and it doesn't allow any of the negative values. So this is more of an idealized setup of how you might decide you wish to, um, you might want to do your reverse polarity protection. Now, this is not uh, real, obviously, because um, one, if this were 100 volts, um, this would still end up working um, in this idealized setting. We need to use real components that have real sensitivities to high voltage. So uh, next we're going, to, um, we're going to talk about how we might use a MOSFET. Now, in the high side, what this is called the high side, and then this is the low side, 
If you want to do this passively, meaning you don't want to have additional components or electronics necessary to what's called enhance the p-channel device, uh, then what you need to do is you need to use a p-channel MOSFET um, in the high side, and you connect it this way. So we'll go to generic P, or, or maybe even choose a real component this time. I'm not really that partial to it, but so I connect here, and this is my my MOSFET. I'm gonna just gonna assist this real quick. This is called the drain, okay? And this is the source. And I'm assuming that the, the viewer here already has an idea of what. Uh, what the anatomy more or less looks like of a MOSFET. We may talk about it real quick, but uh, this is how practically you're going to use a MOSFET, um, even if you haven't studied it uh, in, in greater depth. There's all sorts of models that describe uh, MOSFETs, and there's all sorts of packages, and there's all sorts of um, implementation strategies on, you know, if you have a... a To be honest, there's it, you can study MOSFETs your whole career and probably not expend all um, all that one can know about MOSFETs. But anyhow, you have the drain, the source, and the gate here. And the way that P channels work is, um, although this topology makes sense, it's sort of backwards in how you would expect the control signal to work. So you would expect that if I apply um, a voltage at the gate and between the source that it's going to turn on, but it's actually opposite. You need a negative difference between the source and gate um, in order for this to turn on. So anyway, I'm going to put the, the MOSFET like this, and then I'm going to run the simulation. And there we go. We have a real, uh, a real reverse polarity protection device. And this is kind of the basics of, of what you might expect. And there's, there's something that we do need to talk about, and the way that the symbol works in microcap is that it doesn't show a hidden component, which is the body diode, and that is important. So we're gonna look, um, we're gonna look at it. So we're gonna go to DigiKey and act like we've, we are looking for a part, like we're building a product, and we need a part to fulfill a particular um, implementation. Research is uh, by far the most amount of time that you'll spend when you're designing um, you're designing products. You will spend a lot of time looking at data sheets, and you you may have different characteristics for different needs. So, uh, one of the things that that I've done is I've worked in automotive industry. So, everything every component that you buy has to be AEC Q qualified, and uh, and that's that. It just goes through more tests, or it goes through more. Um, uh, more stringent requirements from the manufacturer, so they they label it as that. Um, some of the parts are identical, but they just have more documentation associated with them. So a lot of customers will say, no, every single component needs to be AECQ um, certified, unless there is a shortage, and then they may give you a deviation for that. But that's another conversation for another day. Always make sure that when you're looking for new parts that you always choose active, because if you choose obsolete, you could be designing on something that's um, that in maybe six months the part isn't going to be available. We're looking for a p-channel device, and we're going to apply. Uh, we're, going to, we're going to apply these now. We start to see these other parameters. I mean, we could have we could have looked at these individually, but um, some of the more important parameters are the drain source voltage, which is um, how much that uh, that device can withstand, and the amount of current. These two things uh, will create a safe operating area that you need to calculate. Uh, when you're designing a product to make sure that you can withstand high voltage and you can also um, uh, allow a lot of current um, to come through that device without overheating it. The, compos the composition or the, or the combination of these two voltages and currents at any given time is the power dissipation just because power is voltage times current so just keep that in mind. Um, or yeah, So there you have that. Alright, so now the gate source voltage. This is the voltage for which the MOSFET is going to respond to us in a controlled way. You know, I choose what this gate to source voltage is going to be and the, the conditions or the logic of how this MOSFET is going to turn on. Um, in most cases, it's around 20 volts. Those are the vast majority of MOSFETs are going to be in there, and that's the maximum. So if you go over that, you could potentially destroy the MOSFET. And this is where we might end up in our circuit. So right now, I have 10 volts going into here. It's at maximum 10 volts, and it's the difference between the gate and source. So I'm within generally the maximum for the gate and source, but if this were to say be 100, uh, I don't know if this device would work the same way because this gate to source um, 
junction, if you will, is going to break it down um, because now there's a difference that's across there, but we'll get to that. So anyways, we're looking for this kind of device here. There's the power dissipation max, operating temperatures. Um, a lot of customers will talk about their operating temperatures and you want them to be generally between minus 40 and 125C if you're in the automotive range. If you're gonna be doing anything with aerospace, then this is extended to minus 55 or 150. I mean, these are these are great if, if this is actually how, how hot these things can get. Uh, MOSFETs are designed for power in mind uh, or for switching loads. So keep that in mind. And then the last thing is the package. So there are all sorts of different kinds of packages that you can prefer. Uh, I tend to like these sort of power packages um, or the um, the D-Packs, uh, uh, T0252. There's all sorts of standardizations and internal standardizations um, that people use. But, but these ones have been pretty effective in the past as far as the package is concerned. Really good power dissipation characteristics. Uh, very low um, profile on your board, all sorts of stuff like that. So we're going to go into the data sheet and we'll spend a little bit of time on that. I had already downloaded it before this point, but we're going to go and look look at it. So there's all sorts of um, all sorts of information that that, that you'll need to use um, about your MOSFET. Uh, it might be overwhelming at first, and you should take one section as it comes um, and try to learn as much as you can about it. Um, anyway, what we were interested in is the symbol. So the p-channel device has um, the source where the, the the arrow is going to be pointing this direction and we have this diode now microcap doesn't seem to include that we get all this portion of the arrows in the right direction okay it's a p-channel device but this diode uh, this diode is very important because if there's a voltage positive voltage difference between the drain and the source then that current is going to actually go through this diode okay and that's what prevents current from going backwards through this. So this this portion of the MOSFET is going to be a variable resistor, preferably something that has extremely high resistance and extremely low resistance between the on and the off state, and a diode which is going to either permit the current through one direction or make it impermissible in the other direction. So if you look at the way that we have connected it, um, that diode would be presented between the drain and the source. So it would be as if we have this diode here. So at the very beginning of this simulation, if there is a positive value, um, before this MOSFET gets the opportunity to turn on, meaning the resistance to drop close to zero, the current or the charge is going to prefer to go through this diode and into the load, which is fine if it's a positive value. Um, this is why you don't connect the the p-channel device in the opposite direction because as soon as I do this now what I have done is I have created this sort of condition with the diode and so if I have a negative value at the very beginning of this it's going to be permitted just by the fact that there's a body diode in the MOSFET so you never connect your p-channel devices that way because you will be accepting all negative values and we're supposed to be protecting against it so uh, just a little bit about topology on how you might use a passive p-channel device in your circuit. Okay, so then back uh, back to here. Uh, what's the minimum gate source voltage? Uh, this is the maximum. Sorry, maximum ratings. Okay, what's the? Let's see if, if they have it here. Drain source breakdown. That's interesting. Gate source leakage. Okay, gate threshold voltage VGSTH. That's what's interesting. If you notice, this is this is negative minus one point three, because we need a difference between the gate and the source to be negative. Um, this is going to be 0 and this is going to be 10 volts, so then our result uh, V gate source is going to be minus 10. Of course, that's greater than, or that's, that's much less than the turn on, which is minus 1.3. So then that satisfies the system constraint, which is the MOSFET turn on. Um, and so a lot of this stuff can be, can be pretty complicated, but we need to think of it in terms of switching. What is it that allows us to switch uh, this particular source onto the load? Um, or this load onto the network of the power supply, depending on how you want to see it. So if we do this, we set up our p-channel device. Under most conditions, it's going to perform the way that we expect it to. We have the positive voltages, and then we have a very clean nothing, which is exactly what we want. We don't want anything to go below the origin so that this load is protected. Now, we have protected the load, but we have not protected the load switching device. Um, and so sometimes because of this application, like in, in most, if you've ever worked around MOSFETs, you tend to see them, uh, well, this is a P-channel device, I'm just going to do this with a net channel so that it makes more sense 
in the application. Okay, so here we have an n-channel device, generic, something like that. We tend to see load switching like this. We, see, we tend to see the MOSFET like that, and now we have a control signal that can switch the load on and off. Uh, but we've used this uh, as a sort of the gatekeeper device that allows us to protect all of the loads, because it might not be just this load, it might be another load, or another, or another, um, or maybe something that's capacitive or inductive or something like that. But this MOSFET will protect all of them, not just switching on and off the one that we have. Um, and we may decide that another circuit may wish to turn on this whole circuit. So you may have a control circuit that is determining whether or not um, this circuit is going to provide power to all of these loads. So that, that's one of the benefits of having this kind of thing, is not only can you do reverse polarity prediction, but you can also do controlled power. Um, controlled power. But again, we've protected the load. I don't know why it's not enabled here. We've protected the load in this circumstance, but we have not protected the actual device because there's a hazard to it. If this source gate exceeds 20 or plus or minus 20, however it is, this is going to be destroyed. So in many cases, what you'll find with your application is uh, you would go into here and you find a zener right there, and you may set this to be something uh, 10 volts, we'll say, that it's not allowed to go any, anywhere beyond 10 volts. Um, we'll say 15 volts, something like that. Okay, so the maximum is 20 and we're giving it some safety margin. Okay, great. And then we have that. And then that's going to go there, and then we have that. Okay, cool. So now this is protected. But wait a minute. Well, what happens if this voltage, um, this zener starts to, to zener? Well, all of this stuff is going to go directly to ground. So in many cases, you may want to protect that zener. And you may need a resistor to do that. So we'll set this at 10K, something like that. OK, great. So now you've protected the gate and source, and you're allowing all of the um, all of the things to happen, which is great. And the performance shouldn't change as a result of having this. Now this is labeled D1. I'm not sure why Microcap does this. It would be better if it just said, OK, you put it, you're putting a zener. Yeah, put a Z1. But it doesn't actually do it that way. Um, so you have to rename it if you're going to keep your reference designators um, uh, consistent. So then let's run the simulation, see if it worked out. There we go. Same pattern, right? All the positive values, great, and nothing up here. And if you notice, we, we upped the voltage. We put it to 100 volts. And uh, we're, we are still performing the way that we need to with this real device, or at least this real um, this component here that has real characteristics to it. And we've protected it from um, from any sort of damage with this with this scener. Um, there are other things that you can do with this, um, other things that you can do with this. But um, now, it, it, should, it should ultimately... Uh, well, I won't go into that. I think that's enough for now. Uh, topology, we've talked about gate over voltage protection, and uh, I think we've hit everything. I think we've hit everything. So I hope this has been helpful in your, um, in your engineering analysis and your, um, in, your, in your career, and thanks for, thanks for taking the time to watch. If you can, please leave like or subscribe, um, notification, all that stuff. It just helps me um, do, um, do what I'm doing here, and uh, hopefully it helps you for, for wherever, you're, wherever you need. So uh, have a great day. Take care.